And for more on this, we bring in attorney Brad Micklin. Brad, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Lauren. Thanks for having me. You know, when you think about it, these probes, these suits, they strike at the heart of Facebook and social media's business models, data, and advertising. So what changes do you see coming out of all of this? There's going to be a lot, I think, because the social media giants have been under attack on a lot of different fronts recently. We have the FTC going after Facebook for the privacy issues. We had the Nunez suit against Twitter, which you know, I think is frivolous, but I think it's going to open the door for a lot of other actions. So I, I think there's going to be, for the first time since social media rose, that we're going to start seeing them be more responsible to the public, not only for its use of data, but for the advertising guidelines that led to the HUD investigation. Yeah, and from, let's hear from, um, from the Secretary of HUD, Ben Carson. This is what he told Mornings with Maria yesterday. Advertisers have the ability to say, I only want to advertise to women. I, I only want to advertise to non-Christians. You know, this kind of information, most people don't know, has been gathered on them. And we want to make sure it is not used in an inappropriate way. So basically, it's micro-targeting. It's been happening for years. These companies have all of this information, and they've had it for quite a while. So how do we change these practices? Well, the beginning is by investigating and bringing it to the public's eye. Now, social media, and Facebook specifically, hasn't been around that long. And acts like the, the Fair Housing Act that HUD used to go after Facebook this time was created back in the late 60s. So it didn't really contemplate the kind of social media giants and information exchange that we're mm. seeing now. How does this play out? What are potential uh, outcomes here for Facebook in particular? Do they pay damages to those who say that they were harmed? by the discrimination? Well, that could be. I think what we're going to see after these investigations will be a large beginning of individual lawsuits against these giants because now we're learning how our information has been used to our advantage in violation of the laws. So once people start learning how they've been affected, I think we're going to start seeing a lot of third-party actions against mm. all of the social media giants that we see. Yeah, big expensive headache. Okay, meanwhile, there's this. President Trump he weighed in on the Jesse Smollett case. Uh, take a listen. I think the case in Chicago is an absolute embarrassment to our country. And I have asked that it be that they look at it. They look at it, meaning the FBI looks at it, correct? But now we're hearing that Jesse Smollett wants an apology. Yeah, it's amazing the turn that this case has taken. I mean, originally... I wasn't so surprised that, uh, you know, a, a famous individual with some influence was able to strike a favorable plea deal. But now between his statements and even his lawyer statements, it seems like instead of just admitting that they took a favorable plea and uh -huh. walked out like many people do, now they're making themselves to be the victim. And it's almost appalling. And Chicago wants $130,000 from the actor for legal fees and the expense of the case. Are they going to get it? That's hard to say because I can't be certain if all of this manpower and overtime went into the case because it was a hate crime or because he was a celebrity. And that's exactly what everybody's complaining about now. So until we find that out, mm -hmm. it's hard to say if they would recover that. Do you think he was overcharged? Do you think those 16, those 16 counts against him were just it, it, too many? I do. I think it was prosecutor overkill. And that, mm -hmm. that may have been part of what led them to eventually dismiss them. Because even though it went to, a, you know, a an indictment, that doesn't really mean much in, in the criminal system. So I think they were battling with maybe a very weak case, uh -huh. but the lack of transparency when they did decide to dismiss it, I think, is what's causing all this backlash. And what does this do to the city of Chicago and the reputation of Chicago? I don't think it's going to hurt the reputation of Chicago, but it will definitely create a rift between the police department and the prosecutor's office, which normally work in concert with one another to prosecute crimes. Yeah. All right, Brad, thank you so much for joining us this morning and covering all those bases for us. Thank we you, appreciate Lauren. it.